celebrating the world's most popular sport. This is Ultimate Soccer, and now your host, here's Soccer Steve. How you doing, guys? Here we go again. Got a different kind of show tonight, and uh, I had to put this on again. Just love it. Just love it. But I had to put it on again. Different kind of show tonight. But first of all, thank you to all the subscribers. You just saw that rolling by. A lot of people joined the gang in the last little while, and uh, I say big thanks to you. And uh, to all the subscribers we have already, big thanks to you guys too. And to all the poets who Make the comments down below. Love every word you say, guys. And I do my best to try and keep up. And I'm not doing a bad job. I get back to pretty much everybody all the time. And if I don't, bang, 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 knock on that door again, and I'll definitely get back to you. No problem. But again, welcome in. Today is about Canada news and world news. Good news and bad news. But before we get into the Canada news, or part of the Canada news, I tell you, I, uh, I'm loving our reputation going around the planet. It's absolutely magic. So, get ready for some uh, some decent Canadian news, and we're going to start off with one of our superstars, Kyle Larin. Kyle Larin, Canada's top scorer, great player for Besiktas, doing pretty good. Orlando before that, and he's a goal machine. Very uh, much the uh, central of the the offense. What you need, strong man down the middle. But great feat too. 73 games he's played for Besiktas and he's scored 30 goals. That's massive, massive. So just a little touch there. Now with Kyle, I think that he's at a big club. Can he go higher? If we have a good World Cup and a good Nations League as well, he possibly will attract attention. But Kyle Larin, top scorer of Canada. I love everything about the guy. And uh, he's got a, a really, really good future ahead of him. So uh, let's keep the goals coming for Kyle. And let's keep the numbers climbing. Kyle Larin, big number. Next up. Jonathan David. What can you say about Jonathan David? Absolutely everything he touches turns to gold. He makes goals come out of nothing. And some of the goals he recently scored, I mean, I tell you guys, we have never seen such amazing goals that the ones he scored recently. Absolutely phenomenal. Such a treat. Last three games, six goals, no defeats. The last three games, absolutely on fire. And uh, hey, drop the comments down below. Tell me what you think about our qualification when it went off. And by the way, next show is question and answer. Send your questions. Put them down below if you want to. Or steve at the ultimate soccer show .com. Email me. That's down below too. Just click it, put it in your contacts, and send a question. Literally, take my email, steve at the ultimate soccer show .com, Throw it in your contacts right now. Right now. Okay. And then send a question. And then I'll be in your contacts forevermore. And anytime you've got a question, boom, throw me. Because each month we're going to do a question and an answer show where I get to hear what you want to hear what you want me to touch, and that's where we'll go. So you will be the conductor, and I will play your tune. So question answer. Questions down below, or steve at the ultimate soccer show .com. Send it there, guys. The email is down below. Copy, paste. You know what to do. Come on. Next show, question answer. I'm relying on you guys to get me some good questions. Canadian flavor. Love that. But anything, anything, any question about soccer at all, give it here. And we'll play with that. Right, so moving on. Jonathan David. Great player. Lille uh, won the league last year. And this year around, he's uh, totaled with 31 games. And he scored 16 goals. Not to mention the goals that I just mentioned about Canada. The guy is a goal machine. He's got great feet. And he doesn't look like he's running fast. But that last goal he scored on the road against El Salvador, where he goes through with the ball, yada, yada, yada. You're thinking, that guy's going to catch him. That guy's going to catch him. And no, he's not catching him. And JD, Jonathan David. Is running down that middle, boom, 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 and that silky little flick over the keeper. Oof, love it in the back of the net. Wow, we have amazing strikers. I tell you, come this World Cup, oh, I tell you, mate, I am absolutely loving it. I tell you, people, woof, come the World Cup. Jonathan David, another massive guy. With him, he's at Lille right now, come the summer. I think he's on for a big move. If I were Jonathan David, I'd wait till after the World Cup. I'd wait till after the World Cup and then get that deal done. But you never know, it could happen before. And there is the rumour of Arsenal 
Liverpool and West Ham. Yeah, they want to see him too. So let's see what happens. Because face it, West Ham don't have too many good strikers. Hmm. Antonio? No. Lanzini? He's okay. But uh, maybe Jonathan David would fit there good because he'd get good time. Just a thought. Arsenal, you're not going to get much time. Maybe not. We'll see. All depends. We'll keep it posted. We'll get on that. But he's going to get a move pretty soon. Next up. Steven Stacchio got a move or a loan move to FC Porto. And we all know about Stevie. You know about Stevie. I know about Stevie. Now he's at Porto. And one game in. 46 minutes in. Also picked up a yellow card. And uh, one on the road. 2-0 at uh, Russia. So Stevie's in with FC Porto. It's a loan move till the end of the season with an option to buy 2.5 million. I can't understand why Florian says doesn't want to keep him, but for Stevie Estacchio, he's gone to the top team in Portugal and could end up a title winner. There's enough games there that he can still get a medal. And as long as they include him, boom. And why would you bring him in if you didn't want to use him? By the way, the game he played, he had a really good 46 minutes. I tell you, he was on his game. He played for Porto just like he plays for us, and it was wonderful. So Stevie Estacchio moves to Porto. He's got a loan deal to the end of the season with the option to buy. I hope they buy him. And he's going to be playing in the Europa League football too. So he's playing in big competitions. Stevie Estacchio, keep your eye on that one. Next up. Richie Bad Boy Larea. Okay, Richie got a move to Nottingham Forest. January the 8th. Two games have gone through since he's been on the bench. But uh, over a month since he moved to Nottingham Forest. He hasn't had a game. He's been on the bench twice. I guess his chance is coming through. Maybe because he had the qualification and the travel. The coach said, Ricky, just get your legs again. We'll touch base in a week. So maybe that's what they're saying. So he's been on the bench twice, but he hasn't crossed the line yet for Nottingham Forest in the championship. Maybe this weekend. Maybe this weekend. Keep an eye on Ricky Larea. But uh, as of yet, nothing to report. Hmm. On that... Only my opinion. Uh, going to Nottingham Forest, great move. But I think he should have held off and tried for probably somewhere nearer to the Premiership. If you're that good, you're going to get there. He's 27 now. This is probably his last big move, unless he really lights it up for Nottingham Forest. So he's 27. This could be his last big move. Three and a half year deal. Let's see where it goes. Ricky Larea, no games played yet. Looking maybe this weekend. Oh, Tejon Buchanan. Oh, he's a darling. I love this kid. He's already played three games for Brugge, or as we say in the UK, Club Bruges. But it's Brugge in, uh, in Belgium. And uh, yeah, Tejon, three games in. He's doing okay. No goals scored. Nothing really to report. But the main thing is he's getting games. On going to Bruges, there's this term stepping stone. If Tejon can really bring it and really stay on fire with his career and really bring the games, I think that Tejon quite possibly could use Bruges as a stepping, tone, stepping stone to a bigger club. A bigger club being someone in the first category. Your AC Milan, maybe uh, your Arsenal, uh, possibly um, Barcelona on a good day. So he's going to step into that next echelon. I say Barcelona now because they're not the team they were, okay? So a bit of rationale there. But... Uh, this could be a good stepping stone for Tejon to a bigger club only if he keeps it going. If he keeps it moving and keeps it going and keeps the numbers working and keeps the form good, he'll get another move. If it doesn't happen, is that a good club? He could just take a season to get back to his original form if he has a down season, but I don't see that. I think that this kid is young enough to keep moving. I think he will. At the end of the day, it's, uh, it's, it's the ball is in his court. Bring the form, get another move. That's what I'm saying. Tejon. Love what he does for Canada. How could you not? Next up. Good news. Good news is Christian Eriksen is going to play again. Yes. Remember he fell on the floor and was pretty much pronounced dead on the field in Denmark at Euro 2020. Well, he's made a, a decent recovery. And he has got a pacemaker fitted. Now, he's going to play for Brentford in the Premier League. 
That's great for him. That's wonderful for him. I feel much love for him getting back to the game. Now, he was with Inter Milan. Inter Milan have released him, annulled the contract. Brentford signed him on a free because Inter Milan would not allow him to play. In Italy, he's not allowed to play with a pacemaker. The Premier League, English Premier League, with Brentford, is going to be playing with the pacemaker. So, I wish him all the best. It's a wonderful story for the psyche. He's back in the game where he should be. And um, I wish him all the best. I just don't want to see anything bad. And um, that's all I'm going to say on that. That's the good news. Now for the bad news. For the last couple of years, due to political differences, whichever way you lie, I don't care. I'm not political. I'm just going to make a point about this one thing. In the Premier League, we've had the teams kneeling for the last couple of years, yeah? It's become quite normal. And yes, there are people that don't like it. And yes, there are people that do like it. But that's not what this is about. What this is about is analysing one Crystal Palace player, Ivorian Coast International, Wilfried Zaha. Absolute fantastic talent. I mean, he's gifted beyond, beyond, his, own, beyond his own belief. If, if he channels that on any given day, he's lethal. Now, what I'm raising the point for with the kneeling is that Wilfried Zaha does not kneel, will not kneel, and says that it has passed its day of usage. There's a question that you might want to bung down below. Has the kneeling gone past its real emphasis anymore? Does it mean anything? Has it got anything? I think that's the question. And also, with Wilfried being one of the few people that's not standing up, uh, sorry, kneeling down, um, it brings a lot of pressure on him. He's showing a lot of character wearing that pressure. But again, has the, we has the kneeling really worn its, its use out or does it continue? Does it need to continue? What are your thoughts? Down below, comment, and we'll get back on that. Or any other question, remember, next show is question and answer. So get on that below and, uh, yeah. Does the kneeling need to end? Has it gone its turn? Does it need to continue? What are your thoughts? Down below, guys, be a poet and make a comment. Finally, another another tough, 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 tough topic. I'm saying it's tough because it is tough. Tough to talk about. Uh, Kurt Zuma kicking the cat, the Bengal cat, in his flat. Not very funny, but um, the RSPCA, the Royal Society of Provincial Cruelty to Animals in the UK, is charging him. They took the cats away from him. Uh, a sponsor, Adidas, is walked away from Zuma, dropped the contract, bang. West Ham are fielding uh, calls from their sponsors. Players on the West Ham United team are asking for higher pay. I tell you, this has made a whole lot of mess for Zuma. And Zuma's brother, Zoom, he has uh, been kicked off and suspended by his team because it's Zuma's brother who posted the video. So both the Zuma brothers who play football, both ba uh, one's banned, the Dagenham and Regic youngster, he's banned. Kurt Zuma at West Ham has received a lot of attention. Sponsors are getting a little bit antsy and things are not looking good. Keep your eye on that one, but I think this one's gonna get even worse for Kurt Zuma. Let's tell you what, you kick a cat, why would you? Why would you? Anyway, next show. This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve.